guys i am srishti and today we are going to do next five questions of finance so today the questions are really important as per the examination point of view because today we are going to discuss indian financial system and some basic concepts of finance so as a finance student you must know these terms and various committees that we are going to discuss today if you like my video then do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon now Moving on to the first question for today. So the question says that commercial banks experienced many innovations during the fortification of institutional structure. Which of the following committee recommended the formation of joint underwriting consortium of banks and the insurance companies? So what does fortification of institutional structure means? to reinforce or to strengthen the institutional structure and what is the term underwriting means so it is a process through which an individual or the institution takes on the financial risk so the committee that is being talked about here it was formed in the year 1953 that is during phase 2 of the Indian financial system so out of these four committees who recommended the formation of the joint underwriting consortium of banks and insurance companies so let's look the next slide and then we'll come back to this slide to answer the question so guys first one is the tandon committee and tandon committee was formed in the year 1974 so what was the recommendations by tandon committee its objective was to develop a scientific system of rationing bank credit because there was an urgent need to direct the bank credit to the newly priority sector in 1968 and also to ration credit due to its scarcity so what does rationing means when you have limited resources but the uses of that resources are plenty so to objectify and to prepare a list that the limited resources could be used for which all purposes that is known as the rationing of credit or the rationing of bank credit in this case where the credit is limited then we have the core committee so this committee recommended how to revive the system of so this committee recommended how to revive a system of cash credit then we have next the shroff committee so this committee recommended the formation of joint underwriting consortium of banks and insurance companies so in phase 2 this was the innovation where the entry of commercial banks in the field of underwriting of new corporate issues was recommended so the participation of banks in such underwriting was first suggested by i'll be writing it here indian Central Banking Inquiry Committee which was formed in the year 1931 and this was repeated by the Shroff Committee appointed by RBI in 1953 but although the idea of forming the consortium was finally dropped because some banks on individual initiative they started participating in the underwriting activity and their interest was presumably stimulated by the tacit support of the central banking authorities but one thing to think about is that why was this recommendation made by this committee so it was possibly because there was a problem of long term finance to some extent and this mechanism would further supplement the funds available from the industrial finance corporations so as ifci was established in the year 1948 so because of the shortage of funds and to give long term finance this was the recommendation made by the shroff committee then we have mv nair committee so this committee's major contribution was regarding the priority sector lending now after understanding the recommendations of each and every committee let's move back to the question to answer it so guys the answer to this question will be shroff committee because this is the committee which on the lines of the indian central banking inquiry committee which was set up in 1931 repeated the recommendation of bringing the commercial banks in the field of underwriting of new corporate issues and it also recommended the consortium of banks and insurance companies this may be due to 
the spreading of risk across the financial institutions and to provide more underwriting services now moving on to the next question for today the question says that a well functioning financial system provides various benefits to financial markets in the economy increase in the number of participants and variety of instruments dealt on the market is referred to as so guys depth in the financial market means increase of financial assets as a percentage of gdp whereas breadth refers to increase in the number of participants and variety of instruments dealt on the market so see what exactly breadth is wide range so increasing the wide range is breadth whereas if we talk about the increase of financial assets as a percentage of gdp that is deepening the financial markets so that is termed as depth and length and height are no terminologies in financial market so the correct answer to this question is option b that is breadth now moving on to the next question for today the question says that which of the following market performs triple service function so four markets have been given to you and you have to tell me the correct answer so the correct answer to this question is option b that is primary market and what is a triple service provided by primary market let's discuss this in the next slide so as we all know that in the primary markets origination of securities are there that is new types of securities are issued in the primary markets so it offers a function of origination then we have underwriting so in primary market to ensure success of new issue there is a need for underwriting firms and the company needs to appoint underwriters so there can be banks or financial institutions or the specialized underwriting firms and in primary market underwriting can be done by a single underwriter or by a group of underwriters so the service is also provided by primary market then we have distribution so it is only when the issue of securities is there and the success of any grand new issue is hinges on the issue is being subscribed by the people so when people subscribe to the new issue that is termed as distribution so the sale of securities to the supreme or highest investors is termed as distribution now after learning about three functions of the primary market let's move on to the next question for today so guys join our telegram channel and group for more related material which is available for free and that will be really helpful and beneficial in your examinations now the question is in order to find the cost of equity capital under capm which of the following is not required so let's understand that what capm is in the next slide and then we'll answer this question see capm is capital asset pricing method so this describes the relationship between the systematic risk and the expected return for the assets particularly the stocks and this capm is used for pricing the risky securities and generating the expected returns for assets given the risk of those assets and cost of capital so the formula for capm is that the expected return of the investment is there then we have the risk free rate risk free rate is of the government security which is usually taken as the rate of return for the treasury bills then we have beta which is denoting the systematic risk and then we have the expected rate of the investment minus the risk free rate of return so it is showing the relationship between the systematic risk and the expected return of the assets that is particularly the stocks so let's see this beta factor is required because it calculates the systematic risk market rate of return is also required market price of equity share and then we have the return on government t bills so the correct answer to this question is market price of equity share as in the formula it was the expected return which is is equals to the risk free rate of return plus the beta factor and the bracket we had the expected rate of return minus the risk free rate of return so the correct answer here is option c 
that is the market price of equity share so you must be wondering that why capm is used so it provides the investors with a means of estimating the required rate of return for a share based on an assessment of this risk if you want to learn more about capm its derivation then do comment in the comment section below so that in the next video i can include such a question of this type now moving on to the next and the last question for today now the question says that stagflation led to the emergence of a particular index which served as a tool to show how badly people were feeling when stagflation hit the economy so four indexes are given so firstly we must know that what stagflation means stagflation is a situation when there is high inflation and high unemployment level so such a type of the situation is known as stagflation so in order to show that how badly people feel during such a type of a situation which index was there and which index shows the feeling of people during such a situation so the correct answer is misery index that is option a now let's see that what other indexes talk about so see misery index is basically the sum of the inflation rate and the unemployment rate the higher the index the greater the misery felt by the people and the first misery index was created by arthur okun so in order to capture the feelings of the people in stagflation misery index was created then we have phillips curve index so it just states that inflation and unemployment have inverse relationship so it does not tell about the feeling of the people rather it just states the inflation and the unemployment relationship and see it says that when inflation is rising unemployment falls that is it showcases the inverse relationship but in stagflation both the inflation and unemployment is rising and that is captured by misery index then we have the human capital index so this index measures that which countries are best in mobilizing the economic and the professional potential of its citizens and the human capital index is a report which is prepared by world bank then we have another type of index that is global innovation index so this index is an annual ranking of countries by their capacity for and success in innovation so i want to ask you that who is the publisher of global innovation index so do answer this in the comment section below and i'll be looking forward to your answers with this we have completed five questions of finance for today i hope that you like the session if you like my video then do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon thank you for watching my video